Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Amaze Book Reviews. This month I read 10 books, as always. If you've read the same books as me, let me know what you think and comment if you think there's anything else I should be reading. Enjoy! The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern Recap Celia and Marco are the chosen opponents in an old duel between two magicians, but they fall in love. The Night Circus is the arena. The fight is to the death without care for those caught up in the middle or the two lovers. Review I adored the setting for this book. I want to be a reviewer of the magical night circus. I thought the imagery was great. You got a fantastic sense of each tent. The characters were well thought out with enough detail and foible so that you cared about what happened to them. The only thing I struggled with was the constant skipping around and date changes. I'm a bit naughty and I don't tend to read chapter headings. And as soon as you got invested in one thread it skipped off somewhere else. Well weed though to bring it all back together at the end. The Power by Naomi Alderman Recap An alternative reality where young women awaken an old power within themselves. They, in turn, awaken older women and the balance of power shifts from patriarchal society to matriarchal society. Review A very interesting idea. What indeed would the world be like if women were literally more powerful than men? The most important point made here, in my opinion, is when two characters are talking about the atrocities happening around them and the comment is made that they're not happening because it's a man or it's a woman, it's happening just because they can, which is a sad yet honest observation on the human race. Among Others by Joel Walton Recap Morwenna loses her twin, is sent to a boarding school she hates and the only thing that offers her some comfort are books, but eventually she must face her mother and put her sister at rest. Review. Since finishing this book, it's lingered with me, permeating my thoughts and wrapping itself around my consciousness. I hope someone has done the reading list for this book, because if they haven't, I will. Written in teenage journal style, sometimes the I went here, I did that, I saw X is a little grating, but the matter-of-fact recounting makes the emotions seem more raw and powerful. When I was little, if you walked around the back of the garden shed and squeezed between it and the fence, you made it to fairyland. I also read a great deal and borrowed 12 books at a time from my local library. To say I could identify with this book is quite possibly the understatement of the year. Curtain Call by C. H. Cleppitt Recap When Jen starts her new job at the theatre, she can only hope to meet her idol, Eleanor Francis. Little does she know her whole life is about to change. Review Love boss blossoms in an unexpected place in this emotional short story. The characters feel realistic, and so the emotion is believable. It's a change of direction for Cleppitt, but delicately written and heartfelt. The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman Recap Irene, with her student Kai, is sent to Norton, London to claim a book for the library. Review I like the idea of an interdimensional library existing between realities with its own language that works across the universe, making things do what you want. And, here be dragons! I think this is really just a toe in the water of a much bigger story that I'm really excited to read, so I'm pleased to see it's the first in a series. The narrative is quite compact, you have to really pay attention or you lose where you are. Thankfully, Irene does a lot of recapping, both verbally and in her inner monologue. Hopefully, having firmly established the world and the characters in this book, the next one will launch straight into story. Paper and Fire by Rachel Kane. Recap. Jess is reunited with his friends and they hatch a plan to look for missing comrade Thomas, but they get much, much more than they bargain for. Review. As ever, with a large cast of characters, there is a degree of sidelining, and sometimes when you're trying to make sure everyone has a voice, no one speaks very clearly. But Jess is still very much the narrator in charge, and whilst I would have liked more from Thomas and Carlia, we still get a decent sense of character motivation and experience. The plot certainly thickened in this book. I love the direction it took at the end. I can't wait to read on and find out what happens next. Kane touches lightly on a lot of bigger issues here. Hopefully we'll get plenty of resolution in book three. The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead Recap Cora is a slave on a cotton plantation. Her mother ran away and was never caught, so when a fellow slave asks her to run with him, she risks it and they use the Underground Railroad to get to safety. Review A compelling read, giving you the horrors of slavery as well as the matter-of-fact acceptance from white society and the fear of those trying to help escapees. The narrative stays mainly with Cora, but does head hop a little to tie up the other character storylines, which is satisfying. We're not left wondering what happened to anyone. I'm sure the book only just grazes the tip of a huge iceberg, but I found the concept of the mismatched railroad fascinating. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Recap. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine, thank you very much. Lives alone, goes to work, passes out with vodka every weekend. 
but then she meets Raymond and her precisely cultivated facade begins to crack. Review. I read this in one sitting, in two and a half hours to be precise. I enjoyed very much the frankness of Eleanor's often Asperger's-esque way of thinking and speaking. I identified with that level of bleak loneliness. I liked that it was, in essence, a novel of hope. For as a human being we need hope, and friends, and love, and companionship in life, and to read a novel about someone finally getting those things was deeply satisfying. Blood Crystal by Jeanette O'Hagan Recap Delphina and Rex's people are still suffering, their crystal hearts still failing. They must figure out how to save their people without sacrificing their children and look to their shape-shifting friends Adeki for help. Review A well-written immediate follow-on to the previous book, which I liked. The individual species are portrayed well and we get a great sense of culture and history without masses of info dumping. There is the suggestion of a much wilder world and immense backstory, which is always great because it encourages the reader to look for other books connected to this world. There were some heart-in-mouth moments and I was rooting for the heroes to find an alternative cure because I cared about the characters. Light's Dawn by Yvette Bostic Recap Mikkel, an Englishman, is captured by the Dutch and forced to scout for them while they are at war with the Portuguese. Raphael is the scout for the Portuguese. The men meet while scouting and discover huge demons intent on wiping mankind out, so they join forces to fight back. Review. I enjoyed reading this. I felt the historical tone was excellent. It really felt like a period book. Blending fantasy with religious miracles in a historic setting reminded me of Sarah Douglas's work. I especially enjoyed the realistic fight scenes and the resulting recoveries. It's fine to have injured people cured magically, but it has to seem realistic. I'd read more in this world. I want to find out what happens next. Thanks for watching. See you again next month. Happy reading.